<laughs> the reading this morning is from Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. The word of God for the people of God. Well, good morning again. <clears throat> I want to start off and, and let you know that you all mean a lot to me. Uh, this this uh, Atascadero United Methodist Church, this community, um, this, this family, this body of Christ, uh, it, I'm, I'm very proud to be part of this church, and I've made many friends and have uh, done a lot of things with many of you. We've done great things in this church. And so it's, uh, it's quite an honor for me today to share with you a part of my life, a part of my faith journey. And it's my hope that through this, that maybe there's something that you, you pull out of this that is helpful in some way, possibly encouraging you in your own faith journey. So I have uh, been a Christian for just as long as I can remember. I grew up in a Christian home, uh, and ever since I was a little boy, I uh, went to, to church, and it was a big part of my life. We went to uh, uh, church in the morning on Sunday, uh, Sunday evening, and then even Wednesday evening. So at least three times a week we were in church, and then there was other activities. So it was really a big part of, of my life. And uh, I think I had a pretty good grasp of at least the basic tenets of Christianity. You know, if somebody asked me kind of the basic things, I could tell you about that. And it was, a, it was an important part of my life. However, if I'm honest, I got to admit that uh, much of those, those childhood years and even my early adult years, it was really kind of a, a mediocre following of Christianity. Um, some, some people might call it lukewarm. You know, you hear that term in the Bible sometimes. Uh, I was a believer, but maybe not so much a follower, right? It was, it was in the head, but not, not necessarily the heart, in my actions. Uh, I went through the motions of being a Christian in many times, and, but there was little passion, and, and there's, there's a big difference there for me. However, things started to change for me somewhere around 15 years ago, uh, and it was, um, it, it was subtle. It was just sort of a feeling, um, something that where I felt like there, was, there had to be more to life that I really had not accomplished or, or didn't have very fulfilling, uh, as fulfilling as it could be. I'll put it that way. Uh, I was a little bit restless, but I wasn't acting out. It was just sort of an internal thing. Um, some people might say I was going through a midlife crisis, and, and, and I've heard that described, and that's, that's probably true. It's where you're reflecting on wh what you've done, wh wh where you are in your life, and, uh, and that certainly was the case for me. And it really had kind of been creeping in for a few years. Again, sort of subtle, in the back of my mind, something that was just sort of there uh, driving me on some level. And the strange thing is that at that point in my life, life was really good for me and my family. Uh, I had a good job. I was financially secure. wasn't worried about that. I was in the Navy Reserves, and I was moving along, promoting up, and having interesting experiences there. Uh, I had a great family. I, I had a, a great job with uh, a great uh, a great relationship with my wife Joanna, uh, and and I still do. She she told me to add that that part in there. <laughs> uh, and I had uh, two little girls. Um, as most of you know, Hannah and Abigail, at that time they were, were tiny and they were the apple of my eye. And, and life was just grand. I mean, just loving it, having a really good time. And we were all healthy. So uh, by all accounts, life was really, really good. It was the life that I wanted. It was the life that I had planned for. And I would even say crafted that life. It was one that I wanted. Yet I still had this feeling in the back of my mind about that there has to be more. And if I, if, it's kind of hard to pinpoint what it was, but if I were to summarize it, I was asking myself, that's it? This is it? This is what life is about? Again, it was great, but there was this yearning for more. And I think that happens a lot to people uh, all over the world, but I think in our country we're always wanting more. What's the next thing? What's the better thing? We want more and more and more. And so that was me, and that was in the back of my mind. And then along that, uh, around that time, I, um, I was called up uh, through the Navy Reserves uh, with my, my reserve unit, 
and we were deployed. Uh, we went to San Diego for a, a few weeks for training, and then we went to Kuwait. It was a uh, it's a small country. You probably know about it, just south of Iraq. And uh, we were planning to be there anywhere from six months to a year. We didn't know how long that it was going to be. And in typical military fashion, or at least in my experience, there's, there's a few, a little bit of excitement and, and activity, but really a lot of boredom, a lot of sitting around waiting uh, and monotonous work. And that really was my case for, for weeks and months. Uh, it was uh, long hours of work. And then during your, our off hours, there really wasn't much to do. Obviously, we didn't have friends and family, uh, and, and we didn't have TV. We didn't have a lot of the, the things that we you normally occupy our time. It was reading books and, and sitting around chit-chatting with our friends in our off time. So I decided, I, I knew I was going to be there for a long time, so I decided that I would try to utilize this time to my benefit, this downtime. What could I do to benefit myself? And so I decided to do a self-assessment. Uh, and this isn't uncommon. I've done this a number of times throughout my, my, uh, my, my adult life uh, where I really reflectively look at my life and what I'm doing. Uh, and I've read a lot of books around self-improvement, self-help books. You've probably read them too. But it's this idea of understanding your life and all the different aspects of it and optimizing each, each of those, those parts of your life. So I looked at my physical and health life, what was I doing in, in that area, how was my financial status, how was my family dynamics, my career, education, spiritual, all these different buckets. And the idea was to find balance, to optimize each one of those, and then collectively optimize my life, possibly have uh, a more fulfilling, more meaningful life by doing that. And it was a unique opportunity because I had a lot of time to do it. I've done it before, but it was just in short periods of time of, of working through this process. So I began to, to look at this. Uh, you know, again, it's, it was sort of like strategic planning if you're in, in business or around business, you know, where you plan things out. What was, the, what was I going to do in the next chapter of my life and throughout my life? So I had a lot of time for this reflection, and I was, I was willing to go... Uh, on some level, pretty deep into this, into these areas. Uh, and, and as I jot, wrote things down, jotted notes down, set goals, objectives in each one of these areas, I would ask myself a lot of different questions, and it, and it just went all over the place. Uh, it was questions like, how fulfilling are these things in my life? What could I do to make them more fulfilling? Uh, and then over time, uh, over a few weeks, I, I began to dwell on it. It's sort of negative, but it was what if I lost these things? What would, what would happen? How would, I, how would I deal with that if I lost any of these things? And, and, and frankly, I've seen people lose these things. We see it all the time. It's a very common occurrence. Uh, and, and I think what I was really trying to, to get to in all of this was how could I maintain control of my life in all of these different areas? And the more and more that I thought about it, the, the less realistic that became is that we really don't have control over certain things that happen to us. The rug can be pulled out from underneath us at any moment in time, financially, physically, uh, emotionally, spiritually. All of these things uh, can happen to people, and I've seen it happen. And so I thought, well, how do I mitigate that? How do I keep from, the, from that happening? And the one thing that kept resonating to me over and over was that my relationship with God was the one thing that I had control over in, all, in reality. I could choose to be part of a relationship with God or I could choose not to be part of a relationship with God, but nobody else could take that from me. There's not circumstances that could take that from me. I have control over that. And so that really resonated with me. And it was very powerful to me and it just bubbled up in a way, and I did not expect this at all. Again, I, it was just, one thing out of five or six other things in my life that I did just to keep life going. And I, and I began to realize that, this, that there was something uh, unique about this relationship with God that uh, that, that needed to be the, the single most important thing in my life. And that the others were secondary and they're still important, but in the context of a relationship with God, uh, they're, they're only important in terms of context, the context of a relationship with God. So 
uh, it really changed my, my way of thinking, and I began to prioritize my, my faith life as being the most important thing. And, uh, and, and re really, that, that put me on a trajectory that changed my life really from, from that point on. So I finished up with the deployment. I went home, talked to Joanna about it, and uh, she, of course, was, was on board with, um, with, with church life and wanting to expand our faith life as a family. So we got involved in a Sunday school class, and uh, we, we happened to have a, a uh, Sunday school teacher that later became a very good friend of mine, and I would call him a mentor. Uh, he was also a military guy, and uh, so, so I, could, I, I really could relate to him. And uh, he was very passionate about his faith. It, it, was, it was very unique to see uh, this authentic person. Uh, he would show up for these Sunday school classes prepared to a T to, to present a very meaningful uh, presentation to our Sunday school class. Uh, he was willing to be vulnerable. It wasn't un uncommon for him to, to get emotional and cry a little bit in front of our group. And, and that was really pretty unique experience for me to see this man so passionate in his faith that he was willing to be vulnerable in front of us. Uh, Joanna and I also got involved in some, some couples Bible study with other couples. We did that for a few years. That was very meaningful, a lot of growth, a lot of, of, of topics that were, were really, really deep and meaningful to us and, and helped us to grow. Uh, and then we also got involved as a family on mission trips to, uh, to Juarez, Mexico. And if, uh, Tracy, if you could move to the next one, uh, to the picture up, up, up on the screen. Um, so we, as, uh, we had various groups that would go to Juarez, which is a border town in Mexico on the other side of El Paso. So we would fly into El Paso, we would go into Juarez, and we'd spend about three days, and we would build homes for people that they had homes, but they were usually made out of pallets and cardboard, dirt floors. And, and this was the poor, Juarez is a poor city, but this was the poor section of Juarez. So uh, we would go in there with the family, with our girls, and, uh, and, and build these homes in three days. And it was an amazing experience. And here, this is Hannah. I don't know if you all recognize her, but this is my oldest daughter. Now she's 23. And she was right there in the middle of, of building things. And go to the next slide. There's Joanna and uh, another gentleman um, that, that were uh, mixing cement. Um, so we, we, did, we mixed the cement. We did things really the way that it's been done for hundreds of years. Uh, and then, uh, next slide, please. And then um, that little girl down below is Abigail. She's so, she's so tiny, and that, that's me behind her. So that really was a, a foundational thing that we did as a family. And of course, many of you that know uh, my oldest daughter, Hannah, she's now a missionary. Imagine that, right? Uh, it, was, it was the foundation, I think, um, of, of get, having these experiences uh, at, a, at a young age to do that. So that, that became a very meaningful part of our life. And uh, we also would feed homeless in, we lived in the Dallas-Fort Worth area at that time, and they had, you know, sort of the, their version of Skid Row in, in Dallas as well, and we used to prepare meals with a group, and we would go down and we would feed the homeless in, in Dallas, and that was a very meaningful experience, and, and again, both of my girls were very involved in that. So through these experiences, you know, life was really getting interesting, and I'd done a lot, you know, I mean, I traveled around, and I'd done a lot of interesting things up to that point, but this, now it was getting interesting, it was getting meaningful, and now life for me had purpose in a way that I had never seen before. My faith was infused into everything that I do, so I still had a job, I still did all those things that I did before, but it was very different approach uh, to how I, I did those things. Uh, not much later, um, my, my, my Sunday school friend invited me to attend Walk to Emmaus. You've probably heard of it. It's an upper room uh, through the Methodist Church program. It's open to, to Protest, Protestant church, uh, 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 Christians. And it was a, sort of like a weekend retreat, a 72-hour period where you're able to take time and reflect and think about your relationship with God with other Christians. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, fairly scriptured and structured and has a purpose. Uh, and through this experience, my eyes really were open to a whole new level of understanding God's grace and God's love. And it was, it was very powerful to me. Uh, and, I, and I began to realize, even though I'd, I'd heard about God's grace and God's love all my life, I began to see God's uh, love and salvation, uh, that it is freely given through Jesus' sacrifice. And that is something that, uh, that for, for whatever reason, the, the time in my life, 
Um, it really hit home very, very hard with me uh, at that point. And I, and I realized that there's really nothing that we can do to earn God's grace, okay? We can't do good deeds. We can't be the best person. Uh, we can't earn it in any way. Um, it's already done. And that's the purpose of, of Jesus' sacrifice was to pay our debt for everything that we've done in the past, all the sins that we've committed in the past, and everything that we're going to do in the future. It's already paid for. And I believe that's what God's grace is for. Now, our, what we have to do is we have to accept that. And we have to live a life uh, that God calls us to live. And, and so it, for me, it's a really different it flipped everything around for me. It, it wasn't no longer an obligation, you know, a set of rules or, or things that you have to do in order to get into heaven or to avoid hell. It really was, how can I live out this, this life in relationship with God uh, in, in, a, in a meaningful way and, and out of a sense of gratitude and love? So it's a very different way of looking at, at, uh, at, at uh, God's grace in that relationship. So knowing what I know now about this, this relationship with God and God's grace, uh, I really can't go through the motions anymore. I, I, I haven't been able to for a long time. And I'm still growing. I'm not perfect. I, there's, there's, it's a continual life, life journey. But I know that I do believe that God is real, and I've decided to be a disciple of Jesus. And by the way, that is the mission of the Methodist Church which is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. So we are called to do that. So I, I openly talk about my faith. I'm not afraid to do that. It's who I am. It's just part of my vocabulary. Uh, and, and I talk with, with strangers. I talk with people in business. Uh, I talk with my friends about my faith. Uh, and I do sort of have an advantage that I have a daughter that's a missionary, which kind of makes it easy to transition into those kind of conversations because when people ask me about do I have kids or what's Hannah doing or, you know, uh, around, that, around her, it's real easy for me to talk about what she's doing um, in her faith life and as a missionary. And that, that opens up a lot of really interesting conversations. So uh, I'm, I, that's, that's an important part of, of my, you know, sort of ministry in my, in my life. Uh, I'm also involved in the brown bag ministry here at this church. You all may know about that. You see the brown bags. They're actually white bags now, by the way. Quick update um, in the back. If you would like to grab a bag on the, just as you, you leave the, the door, leaving the, the sanctuary here, um, you can take those and you can put them in your bag. And then when you see homeless people or people that need something, uh, you can just grab one of those bags and you can give it to them and then you can say, God bless you, tell them that it comes from the church, whatever. That's what I normally do. I try to let them know that it comes from a church so that there, there is some context of what we're, of what we're doing for them. Uh, so, so, um, so that's something that I've, I've found. It's, it's fairly simple to do, but it is acknowledging people and showing the love of Jesus to them. And in general, you know, people are, are hurting. Everybody has... Um, problems and issues and challenges that they're trying to deal with. And so if you're able to make, t take some of that burden or, or let them know of the love of Jesus, then you're giving them hope. And there's nothing more powerful in this world than hope. So uh, I, I would, would encourage you to, to, to think about, about your relationship with God and being open about your faith. Uh, for me, life has been far more interesting and far more fulfilling since I've made this commitment to God. Uh, and I got to this place because I was intentional about it. I, I thought about it. I reflected on it. I was purposefully purposeful about it. So if you find that you are unfulfilled in your life and in and, and, and any area of your life, uh, and, and you sometimes say to yourself, that's it, or, or this is it, this is all there is to life, then I would encourage you to step out on faith and grow your relationship with God and see what he has in store for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. That was great. Will the ushers please come forward for the offering? <laughs> 